Hello everyone. Thank you for stopping by Sewing Machine Rehab today. We are going to carry on with our restoration of a Singer 301 and today we are going to talk about polishing the body of the machine. So I have done a lot of work for you all in the last few days and this latest episode has taken me a little bit longer only because I really wanted to feel comfortable with some of the ideas I might bring to the table about how you're going to polish up the body of your machine once you've cleaned it. And this would include also the um, top cover of the machine, the bottom cover, the outside of the bottom cover, your hand wheel, and the nose cover. For your machine. Also the stitch regulator plate which you'll be putting back onto the machine here that can take polish as well. So if you are looking out on the internet you're going to find uh, a lot of different opinions about what to clean a machine with and how to polish it. I would say most of the controversy is going to surround the black machines and there's a good reason for that. People are not wrong to be overly cautious with how to handle the finish on a black machine. That being said, I'm going to share with you some of the different things that I've heard people talk about that they've used and which ones I have used, which ones I don't really use anymore that sort of thing. So today we're going to talk about polishing the machine, what we do to make it shiny on the outside, and then what we do to add a layer of protection at the end. So first, number one cleaner that you might hear about is, especially for the black machines, is sewing machine oil. And I don't have anything against using sewing machine oil. It's definitely super gentle. I think that when you're cleaning with sewing machine oil, you have to take into account how you're applying it. So what applicator you're using, how long you let it sit, because if it's going to lift away any grease or residue that's on the body of the machine, it might take a little bit longer for it to sit and soak in. I love using the sewing machine oil to help me remove adhesive because sometimes on the beds of the machine you'll find where someone has taped a line, maybe a seam guide or something, or you might find stickers on the machine from when they were serviced and that gummy backing can be really hard to get off and this is my best friend for getting that off and it's just a matter of letting it sit and soak for a long time. If you are worried about damaging the lacquer on your machine at all, if it's very fragile and it has crazing, which I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit more in a moment, then if you want to play it safe, this is a really good bet. The downside, I feel, to using sewing machine oil is that I'm not able to polish back in that new look luster that the machine would have originally had. And so I'm going to make a decision on whether or not I use the sewing machine oil depending on each individual machine, if that makes sense. If I have a pristine body machine and the lacquer is in perfect condition, it may not need polishing. Or if the lacquer is in okay condition, I don't see where it's crazing or has a crackly look to the finish, then I may opt to use a different kind of polish. So when I first started working with machines, I started out using Meguiar's Cleaner Wax. And it the end result isn't bad, especially on the tan machines, but this is a cleaner wax. So what that means is that it is designed to clean away dirt. I have seen this cleaner wax lift off the color, the paint of a tan machine. I don't think I ever used it on a black machine because I had graduated away from it to something else by that time. But if this is all you can find and you're working on a tan machine, 
it will give you a shinier, smooth finish that you can then apply a layer of carnauba wax to, and your machine's going to be fine. So here's one of your options. It's affordable. You can find it in a lot of your big box stores, and it's not a bad alternative. It's not my number one choice, but I wouldn't say don't ever, ever use it. I would test it on a spot on a machine that is painted black, uh, just like I do with almost any product that I put on a machine that's black, but it's okay. The next product that I will talk about is So Retro Clean. And I actually discovered this after using this. And the, the way that happened is this product Zymol, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment, used to be sold uh, at the Singer Featherweight shop online. And um, they had like a small packaging of it that was more appropriate for someone who's just going to clean a machine, not a car, because these are this uh, is used on cars. And they designed their own formula and this is called So Retro Clean. And it makes me think a lot of shoe polish. It is different from any of the other cleaners I'm talking about today as far as its consistency. It works like shoe polish, honestly. Uh, it never really dries on the machine and you polish it off and it works really well. Again, great for the tan machines. Now, when I get to a black machine, I may or may not use this depending on, again, the condition of the lacquer. If I have that crackly sort of finish starting to appear in the lacquer where it's like, it's not coming off, but you can tell it's breaking up, it has that aged look to it, I'm more hesitant to use this. I feel like it gets trapped in those tiny little cracks and I, I feel like they become more noticeable when I'm done. And maybe that's just my imagination. It might have something to do with the color of this it, because it's you know, not clear and that's probably not even possible. I don't always use this one. Also, I will say it smells like shoe polish, <laughs> which, yeah, there you go. Meguiar's has a, a scent. This one smells like shoe polish. But it does work, and the nice thing is, is you can get it on Singer, or I'm sorry, the Singer Featherweight Shop's website in a small uh, container that's enough for more than one application for sure, uh, coupled with the Carnauba wax that they have, which I will say that is very good. So here's one of your options. It's a little bit more on the pricier side but, uh, and I wouldn't even quote the price right now because it could have changed. But this is an option that I would say, yeah, it'll work, but again, think about the machine you're working on before you start using a product like this. Then I have Zymol and Autoglim. And from what I kind of have noticed, first difference between the two is this one, this, this Zymol is HD Cleanse, it does cleanse and lift away some grime off of the machine. And that is great if you have sort of varnished uh, on oil in places. And I appreciate that. When I have used the Autoglim, I have not felt like it lifted away as much dirt. So does that make this maybe a little bit more gentler? Possibly, but again, what I notice with Autoglim is that if I have that crazing, that crackling in the finish, then I do feel like it is more apparent when I'm finished polishing the machine. And even though it is super shiny, this will give you a mirror finish in most cases. If you have the crazing, you just wanna think about that. And I'll tell you in just a moment, if you decide to use a product like this, or this and you see that the crazing is more noticeable, how you remedy that. So this is an option, but for me personally, I am a Zymol girl. I love this stuff and after using it 
a lot. <laughs> um, I've kind of learned little tips and tricks on how it works. And I know when to go easy with it and when to, I can, you know, really put some elbow grease in and get the machine super shiny. This is more expensive. In fact, when I purchased this Zymol, it came with the HD Cleanse and also their Carnuba Wax, which is excellent. And it's a big tub and I, I didn't get this on the Singer Featherweight shop because they had stopped carrying it. So I had to buy a full size deal and I think it was 60 to $80. It was not cheap at all, but I have done 15 machines with this bottle and it's still half full or a little bit more. So for me, that is a worthy investment for a product that works that I'm not using, you know, multiple applications to get the results I want. So it's really up to you what you're going to choose. I think that I will show you how I polish a machine using the Zymol and what you would do depending on the cleaner or the, the polish compounds or whatever that you use. And then of course the Carnuba wax, you need to follow the directions they are there for a reason. So this one, I do not let it dry. This one, I let it dry. And that's just gonna depend on your cleaner. So to talk to you a little bit more about the crazing, you may or may not have a problem with this. For those of you who are going to start working on a black machine and you have already noticeable crackly finish in your paint, Let's talk about some of the things that you are going to run into, some of those issues. Okay, so here is the machine that has been with us through this whole restoration. And I am trying to point out to you what I'm talking about as far as a crackly or hazy finish. And if I can't get a good shot of it, I will go ahead and take some photos that I add to the video. But if you focus right up here on the machine, it just has a funny look. And if you look really close, it's very crackled. And that is where the lacquer and its age has started to not necessarily break down, but it's wore off in a little bit of places. And it's just maybe dried out and it's got some little crackles in it. So I can run a cleaner over this other than sewing machine oil and chances are it's going to be more noticeable when I'm finished. It might be super, super slick and shiny, but those little lines and cracks are gonna show up more. What I do in that situation, if I decide that I do, I do want to polish the body and get that shine, is when I'm done, I go over it with the sewing machine oil. And that seeps into all those little cracks and crevices and flattens, uh, flattens it back out so you don't notice them anymore and then I'll uh, let that sit for a day or so and then give it a good wipe down, make sure I don't have a lot or any really oil left on the surface. Then I'll apply my Carnuba wax at the end. So that's kind of how you deal with it. Now, some of the other things that you're going to find on this machine are places where the lacquer is just totally gone. And I'm going to turn off some lights here and hopefully it's daylight outside. So hopefully we'll still be able to get a good idea of what I'm talking about with my black light. Okay, yes. So if you're looking here, see those dark spots where it's black here? That is where there is no more, or there isn't any more of the lacquer finish remaining on this machine. So it's all through here. And that layer is going to do a couple, or that missing layer is going to do a couple things. First of all, it's gonna give us an uneven looking surface. So even if it's shiny, shiny, it's not gonna look flat. And there's nothing you can do about that unless you want to mess with um, actually, you know, applying another coat of lacquer or doing a French polish, which I wouldn't personally do. So this is a good test before you even start working on a machine to kind of see where you stand 
Once that lacquer is off though, I will say the paint underneath isn't a dull finish at all. In fact, it's very shiny. So you can polish and, and get in those places where the, the lacquer is gone and still get a nice shiny finish. It's just, it's something you're going to notice. That's probably really about it. The tan machines, like I said, as far as how I physically polish them, it's exactly the same as the black machines. I apply my polish with uh, old t-shirts and typically I put just a little bit in a bowl so I can keep the bottle closed and it doesn't dry out and I can control how much I get. I dip my, my little you know rag into the bowl and I go to town with my polishing. When I get to areas like this on the machine, around where the tension unit is going to be installed, then I start getting a little crafty and I apply the polish and work the polish in around with Q-tips. And that's really just how you have to do it. If you're really kind of picky like me and I want every little uh, inside corner and outside corner to be super shiny and clean, I'm gonna do it with Q-tips. At the end, when I'm finished, I'm gonna take the Q-tips in all my little holes because as I'm working, I'm trying not to get polished down these holes, but that doesn't mean it never happens. So I'll go around and make sure I've cleaned out all those places where polish might have built up and just get it off with Q-tips. So what I will do now is set up just to give you kind of an idea of what you're going to see result-wise when you do this polish and then it's up to you how you want to go ahead and finish up your machine as far as polishing the body. This is a little bit time consuming. <laughs> I think I did say that, didn't I? But it is because there are so many little nooks and crannies. And if you're starting out with a black machine and, and we did not clean this one with cleaners on the outside like we did the tan one, you still may have a little bit of extra dirt you wanna clean off before you actually start using your cleaning polish, if you will, or your uh, Singer oil. This is another thing that might be controversial to some. I find that a damp rag that I have wrung out really, really well is a great way to clean off some of that old dirt and dust before I go in and start polishing. And I will run it along the grooves here and here, here, um, up in the light, inside down where the hook is, is a lot of old lint and stuff that might be caked on. And I just rub over that with a wet rag very quickly. I do not let water stand on the machine. The rag needs to be wrung out well enough that it pretty much instantly evaporates and you should be fine. So go ahead and get some of that real heavy surface layer dirt off before you start polishing the machine. You also want to pay attention working around the badges that's where the Q-tips are going to help a lot getting in around those grooves. You'll find a lot of patina that happens with brass will be right up against the edge of the badge in the machine and your Q-tip will normally get a lot of that off for you. I know some people remove the badges. I don't do that. These little nails that hold them in can break and I am satisfied with how clean I get everything without actually taking them off, so I don't. Another thing that I will suggest, if you can, once you've given it a wipe down, vacuum your machine off. I know that sounds really crazy, but truly, you wanna start with a clean, pristine surface. You don't want any debris trapped between your rag and the machine. So I take the real soft brush on my vacuum cleaner and I just vacuum the whole surface off before I start to polish. And I'm so pleased with the results when I do that. I'm really seeing you know, what's going on. I'm not just moving dirt around. And for me, that really, really helps. So I'm going to start polishing this machine and I'm going to pick a spot that I can kind of show you 
all the different little methods that I use when I'm polishing and then we'll do the same on the tan machine and then I'm going to leave this all up to you to finish. So I'm going to work on this area of the machine and there is a tiny bit of crazing right up here at the top but I'm going to show you how I apply the Zymol and I've got a little bit here in the dish so I need just my old t-shirt that I have cut up and I like to just dip my finger in it and then I follow the instructions on the Zymol which is apply to the the surface uh, only working in two directions so this one I do not go in circles and I also don't start working in too big of a space so it doesn't get out of control for me because this will start to dry and technically you're not supposed to let it dry. Uh, I haven't had anything bad happen if it did dry a little bit before I started the process of wiping it off but you know we, we're supposed to follow the rules so I just keep going back and forth both directions going to focus here where I do see that crazing mainly because I am trying to kind of get it to show up more so I can show you how I deal with that now one of the things uh, tests that you might want to do when you're using these cleaners and with the uh, Zymol because of the color it's a little bit harder to tell but you want to know if you're lifting anything other than dirt off the machine. If you see a lot of a golden color on your rag, there's a chance you're taking some of that lacquer off as you are using whatever polish you're using. And, um, and I say that because the lacquer on these machines as it ages tends to get more of a golden color. And if you don't believe me, look at the decals on a machine and they have such a deep rich gold color but if you see any places where the lacquer is removed over a decal you'll notice that um, they're not as golden and I think it's that layer of lacquer that's really contributing to how beautifully gold those decals are that's just my opinion so I have put on the Zymol and now I have polished it off and I was talking in particular look how shiny that is first of all it's a beautiful finish I'm talking about this little spot right here and I might be a little might be being a little picky it's actually not super noticeable now the um, crazing that I was talking about earlier but this is what I would see maybe show up a little bit more after using a, a polish like that. So hopefully I can kind of give you an example of what sewing machine oil does when you're done. I'm just putting a little bit on my finger and I'm coming in and I'm putting it on in a circular motion over that spot. And I do take a little bit of time to make sure I've worked it all in and then I wipe it off any of the extra with a towel or a rag and it's hardly visible at all now. So that's how you're going to deal with that if you have that on your machine. So I'll do a little bit more Zymol up here because I think it's worth seeing the the transformation okay so my my rag and the nice thing is is I just keep using the same rag to apply just find a clean spot and okay let's pay attention there's a little spot right here we're gonna see if that comes off or if that's something to do with the lacquer itself sometimes those are just like spots where it's just oil and crud and, and the cleaning uh, polish 
will lift it off. I think in this case we're going to see that actually it is a chip in the lacquer itself. And just keep rubbing this on. And then when I feel like I've given it all a good once over at least, I can come back in and wipe it off. Look at that. So beautiful and shiny once again. And this must have just some little micro uh, abrasive material in it that it's not scratching it's polishing so that's why I personally love it so much now if you wanted to you could be using your q-tips here in these little crevices make sure you get all of the polish out because when it dries it turns light in color and it will show up in here so that's basically it all over the entire body of the machine um, like I said the hand wheel the top cover the cover for the nose and the outside bottom of the bottom cover you can polish all of those and just be prepared to spend several hours doing so and it really is super rewarding last thing that I would do is apply my wax and start with a clean rag. It does not take much of this one. A little bit goes a long way. Just start putting it on in both directions. Make sure I'm working it in. I'd like to go back and forth several times in each direction. And then when I feel like I've given it a good coating, it says do not let dry. I'm just going to take it off with the rag. And now I have a layer of carnauba wax to protect the lacquer finish that is still on this machine. And you can see how shiny it is still. So that's that. All right, let me move over to the tan machine now. So same spot on the tan singer same process I don't know what they finish these machines with but you can see I did clean this with a Krug cutter on the outside and I know it did raise a few eyebrows and I will just say that you know this is my preference typically on how I clean these machines but it's you know each to his own here and if you are uncomfortable doing it that way then do not do it this I'm just applying the same way I'm really making sure I get in these little grooves here and doing the back and forth motion as well as up and down and then when I am finished, clean rag and wipe it off. Now, <laughs> look at that. It is gorgeous. It polished up so beautifully. This is the same shine the machine would have had originally. So again, I would just come in once I'm done and do my layer of carnauba wax doesn't take much just a little dab apply the carnauba wax I might have not got enough there over it same procedure I love how I will say I also love how the Zymo smells it smells like chocolate oh, I know that sounds probably a little bit crazy but um, it really does. It smells like chocolate to me. And I like that smell over uh, shoe polish. So there we go. That's it. Can you see 
how this machine just transformed. Now imagine I'm doing this all over the whole body, even in the uh, hook end, which is my least favorite part, I will say, because it's so curvy and, and you need a lot of Q-tips to reach where your fingers won't reach, but the uh, end is definitely worth it. So we'll just do one more little example here and then we can be finished with this part of the uh, series and i'm excited for that because i really can't wait to start putting uh, these machines back together i think one of them is actually already sold and so i know someone's going to be happy to have it soon so just focusing on this little area here and I can wipe it off the clean rag and there you have it so that's what you should expect to see when you're done uh, the Meguiar's doesn't give me as satisfying of a finish as the Zymol does. I believe that on the TAM machines, I think I did say the So Retro is almost exactly the same as the, the Zymol. The Autoglim I haven't tried on this, but that's, like I said, gonna come down to you. I don't think I would like cleaning these with sewing machine oil. I don't think it's necessary to treat it as gently, but someone may not agree with that. Uh, but for me personally, that's kind of the decision I have come to. So we are done with this portion of the restoration. Obviously I'm not done. I still have to finish polishing these machines, but I think I've given you enough to go on where you can go sit down happily wherever you're going to polish your machine and just get busy. So let's all do that and we will meet back here hopefully very soon <laughs> and I think we will start with uh, putting the hook back on the machine. I really would like to do that as our first piece that we put back together onto the machine. So I hope everyone's been doing well. Thank you again so much for watching. If you like this series, please remember to subscribe to the channel so you know when the next video is out. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.